thank you everybody for joining us today for our weekly Zoom call. We do this uh, Zoom webinar actually uh, every week and uh, we always have Mondays set aside for our opportunity calls for brand new people that want to learn about for life and transfer factor and this incredible opportunity that we have. And then Wednesdays, we always have our training. Monday and Wednesday is in Portuguese first and then in English. We just finished our Portuguese uh, Zoom webinar with Dr. Paula Brock. Uh, we talked about transfer factor science. It was an amazing call. Um, and this call, by the way, with Dr. Vollmer and with Dr. Paula Brock will be uploaded in my uh, portal on my website. If you just go to, and Claudia will put this in the chat, www.davedaughtry.com. Just go to the education library and you can go in there and you'll be able to uh, download this recording for today. Um, so let's get started. You know, today's a special day. It's always fun when we have special guests on here. Um, those of you that don't know me, my name is Dave Daughtry. I'm a Platinum International Diamond with For Life Research. Um, I have been uh, an associate, a distributor uh, for For Life since 1998. And uh, I fell in love with Transfer Factor after about uh, less than 30 days of using the product. Um, I fell in love with it because of what it did for me. Uh, as far as my health goes, I was struggling with a, a, a serious health challenge. And after I learned about the product, and keep in mind, this was 1998. There was no Google, no YouTube. So I had to basically ask for information on facts. And I received papers and facts and read. And the more I read, the more curious I became, the more curious I became, the more I learned. And the process was incredible. I learned a lot about transfer factor and I'm very grateful for all of the doctors and scientists I've met over the years from Dr. Calvin McCosland, Dr. Rob Robertson, Dr. Dwayne Townsend, and now Dr. David Vollmer. So we're very blessed to have Dr. Vollmer with us today. Um, I always enjoy listening to the scientists and to the doctors because we learn a lot and knowledge creates confidence. Confidence should create action and it's that action that creates results. But it begins with knowledge. So I just want to ask everybody that's listening in today, take this information uh, as you hear it. We're going to take some questions from everybody as well. But remember that knowledge is really good. Knowledge is power. But at the same time, how we share that knowledge with people is so important. And one thing I like about Dr. Vollmer, Dr. McCosland, pretty much all the doctors I've worked with over the years is that they understand the KISS method. KISS, you know, we all know what KISS is, right? It stands for keep it simple and stupid, all right? And, and I, I kind of like that method because it's helped me throughout the years. So as we get this uh, information that we learn from Dr. Vollmer, uh, take it, process it, and share it with people. And that's really what's important here is to share this information. Right now, we're all going through a crisis around the world with this pandemic that's going on. We're all, you know, cocooning in our homes. We can't go anywhere, social distancing. And so this is a great opportunity for us all to take the time and to learn, but share, you know, get on, invite people. Even right now, we're just starting this call. We'll be going on here for about an hour. Invite people. Let's get this up to over 100 people on this call today. We had 160 on the Portuguese call. All right, this is English, you guys. So let's get people on here. So let's get started. Now, I apologize, my halo's hitting me in my glasses. So you might see a little shine in my, my glasses here. So, but uh, let's get started. Uh, we've got a special guest, Dr. David Vollmer, um, who's with us today. And Dr. Vollmer, he is the chief scientific officer uh, for For Life Research. Uh, he's been with For Life now. How many years, Dr. Vollmer, have you been with For Life? Uh, it's been over seven now. Over seven years. And I know that you're a specialist with quality control. Um, you've actually, you, you hold patents, as I understand, patents um, that have to do with, uh, is it processing uh, uh, as far as cancer and inflammation? Yeah, yeah th so that was in my previous life. Uh, so I spent a lot of years in the pharmaceutical industry uh, looking at drugs that dealt with cancer, inflammation. Uh, so I have a number of publications as well as patents around uh, that work. Uh, and then about seven years ago, came to For Life uh, in a completely 
a different setting, uh, looking at supplements, and uh, have we pu actually published quite a bit uh, here at For Life, and have a few patents as well uh, with with the work that we're doing at For Life. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand you know For Life. We're not a drug company, but we adhere to those same standards, pharmaceutical standards, uh, in the method to where we manufacture and process uh, our product, correct? Yeah, that, that, absolutely right. Uh, in fact, that's one of the things that I think really, uh, that I love about For Life, it's really, it's what brought me to For Life was uh, working in the quality control uh, lab. Um, coming from pharmaceuticals, uh, that was my expertise, was uh, product development as well as uh, quality control. Uh, and so when I got to For Life, one of the questions that I asked is, um, you know, how uh, this is how I would like to run this. I'd like to run uh, our lab, our quality system, like the pharmaceuticals do, uh, which follow what we call GMPs or good manufacturing practices. Um, and the good manufacturing practices in the pharmaceutical industry are, are quite uh, rigid compared to those in the supplement industry. Uh, and so, in a lot of ways, we're, we're going above and beyond uh, what others do in the industry. I think it's something that, that kind of sets us apart, uh, how we do all of our quality systems uh, at For Life compared to other folks within our industry. Uh, but it's a really important part of uh, the products that we develop because if you don't have uh, good quality ingredients that go into good quality products, uh, then you're really not going to be able to sustain yourself as a, as a reputable company uh, for a long time, certainly not over two decades. Uh, what that does for us as well, it gives us that are, we're out in the field sharing this information with people. It gives us tremendous confidence. Um, over the years, just me, when I've talked to the doctors and I attend the various seminars that you have at conventions and so forth, the workshops, um, I always leave with a great confidence and pride in what we have and what we're sharing with people. So even though I may not always understand what the doctors are saying, it, it really gives me that assurity and that confidence and pride. So when I go out and share this with people, I can really hold my head high. And we're grateful for that too. So thank you, Dr. Vollmer. So Absolutely. let's go ahead and get started with some of the questions we have here. Um, and those of you that have questions that are listening, please try to use the Q&A section on this call because if it's in the chat, it gets buried. And sometimes it's hard to go back and look at all of the, the, the comments and so forth in the chat. So just use the Q&A section, please, and we'll do our best uh, to get to the, all the questions. Uh, we may miss a few. Uh, please understand that uh, it, sometimes we just can't answer every one, but we will have this webinar uploaded to my website, davedaughtry.com, uh, later this evening. So you can all download it and watch it anytime you'd like. Uh, as well as other videos and training we'll be having. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, you know, I've been around the health and wellness industry for a long time. And for me, the journey began in 1991. Um, I actually was diagnosed with a condition called Crohn's disease. And at that time, not many people talked about it. Now you hear about it on commercials and everything, but it affected me tremendously. And uh, that led me to start doing some research because you know, I wanted to empower myself. Knowledge is power. And I wanted to learn. So I learned about all kinds of vitamins and minerals and herbs and supplements. And all of a sudden, I get this bottle uh, was sent to my little apartment where I was living. At the time, I was broke. Dr. Calvin McCausland sent it to me. I'd met him in 1993. We lost touch with each other. And I'm so grateful he thought of me. Sent me this bottle with a letter and invitation to take a look. And I thought, I've seen every supplement. I've seen everything out there. But this was different. So Dr. Vollmer, how is transfer factor different than the typical vitamins, minerals, and supplements that we see out there in the world? That's a great question. Uh, it's usually the first question that we get because most people uh, have not heard of transfer factor. Uh, and it's because it's just not like any other ingredient that you're going to come across. Uh, as you mentioned, it's not a vitamin, uh, which we're all familiar with. It's not a mineral, and it's not even an herb or a botanical. And the, the way I really think about transfer factor is it's, it's, a, it's a sophisticated colostral extract uh, that contains highly bioactive peptides and proteins. We actually concentrate these peptides and proteins using this proprietary and patented technique called ultrafiltration. 
Uh, and that was what generated the first product uh, that Dr. McClausland uh, sent to you um, was this, this ultra-filtered colostrum. Now, many companies out there also have colostrum-based products because there's a lot of wonderful benefits from colostrum, but none of those products really extract out these bioactive peptides, these transfer factors, like we do at For Life. And so we're really quite different than, than the other products that you might see out on the market. And in terms of the research, uh, we've done a, a lot of research, and we'll probably get into that a little bit uh, during this call, uh, particularly around natural killer cells. Uh, and those have shown that transfer factor has uh, these wonderful immune benefits, these properties that other competitors don't have. Uh, in fact, we've actually recently shown in one of our newer products that transfer factor acts as a prebiotic, uh, and so it acts in the microbiome. And no one else has done that type of research uh, with a product like this. Well, that's that's quite interesting. Wow. You know, I um, you, I like to use analogies. I'm big on analogies. And I get that question often now, uh, because you do see colostrum uh, in some of the health stores out there. And I just tell people, look, here's how I compare transfer factor to colostrum. It's like saying, uh, under the in the earth, under the ground, there's something we call oil, crude oil. If I took that crude oil, you know, like would be colostrum, let's say, and I took that oil and I put it in your gas tank of your car, what will it do to your car? It'll kill it, it won't run. Well, if I took the gas from your car and went down to the airport and put it into an airplane, would it fly? No, it won't. So if I took fuel from an airplane and went to NASA, you know, in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and I put that airplane fuel into the space shuttle, will it take off? No, because there's a process it goes through to get to that rocket fuel. So I look at transfer factor, that's the rocket fuel. Mm. You know, and it takes a lot of colostrum just to get a little bit of transfer factor, correct? That's right, yeah, there's, there's very little uh, transfer factor in colostrum and so it requires these specialized filters uh, that we call ultra filters. And what that really does is it allows us to take all these things that are in colostrum and really standardize or extract out these highly bioactive uh, peptides and proteins that make up transfer factor. Interesting. You said the word peptide, and this is a question I asked Dr. Brock as well. Um, you know, peptides, not many people hear that word a lot. I'm fairly familiar with peptides as being a protein, amino acids, um, but you, can you tell us all, what is the definition of a peptide? Yeah, so, Peptide, you can think about it as, as a, simply just a biomolecule uh, that exists in every living system. Uh, it's made up of smaller molecules called amino acids. Uh, you may have heard of amino acids. Those are really oftentimes described as the building blocks of life. Uh, and so you have amino acids that make up peptides. And then if there are uh, and that usually goes up to about 50 amino acids. And so they're, they're like these long chain of amino acids that make up these peptides. And as they get larger and larger, that becomes what we call proteins. And so you have amino acids that make up peptides and then peptides that make up proteins. And these peptides, these proteins, these amino acids, they play a lot of different crucial roles within our body, including biological functions like adding, acting like a hormone. So they're very, very important molecules uh, and they have been identified, transfer factor has been identified as a peptide type or a protein type of molecule. Interesting. You know, uh, our boy Brandon, he's 20 years old right now, but uh, when he was mm. two years old, uh, I went into my office and um, I saw him on the floor. He had somehow opened a bottle of transfer factor. At the time it was classic and he mm. ate the whole bottle. And, but he had some capsules stuck on his face because of the slobber, you know. But, uh, you know, I thought it was kind of cute. I wasn't worried. Some people ask me, well, can I take too much transfer factor? Is it dangerous? I wasn't worried because I saw a study by Jeunesse um, that was done. Um, uh, I think it was at the University of Irvine, I think. Mm -hmm. they, they, they did it in conjunction. But it was a toxicology or toxicity study. And they found no, to no toxicity at, at these tremendous levels. But can you tell us a little bit about, you know, is there like too much transfer factor a person could take? 
That's a great question. Uh, and, and just generally speaking, transfer factor, uh, you could consider as a natural product. And so generally the perception of natural products is they are safe. Uh, however, uh, that said, For Life uh, has done a lot of work uh, demonstrating the safety of transfer factor through a number of these uh, safety and toxicological studies that you were mentioning. Now, these studies are really similar to what's uh, being done when you develop a pharmaceutical drug. Uh, and so they're very, every bit as safe. Uh, they're natural. Uh, and we have the talk studies that show that. In fact, the last set of studies that we just completed and were, was published last year uh, allowed us to achieve what we call GRASS status. And GRASS stands for generally recognized as safe. And what's interesting about these studies and what you had mentioned earlier was that we couldn't actually find a dose level, even the highest dose levels that we were at, we couldn't find a dose level that would give us an, what we call an observable adverse effect. So some sign, some sign of, of a safety, an issue with safety or an issue with toxicology, we couldn't find it at even the highest levels of transfer factor. And so we know through these studies, we know that it's natural, uh, we know that they're safe uh, as demonstrated by all these different studies. And that, ex that last set of work to allow us to become a grass ingredient was actually published as well. And I can send that to you, Dave, if you wanna uh, send you a link to that, if, if anybody's interested in reading that. It's very Please. cool, very uh, detail-oriented, but it really talks, us, talks how we go through the process of demonstrating that we have a product that is safe. Now, in terms of, of, of of what you were talking about with your kid, one thing to think about a transfer factor is, is absolutely very safe. Uh, the one thing to be, um, the one thing to think about when you talk about transfer factor with kids is how it's delivered. Uh, and so when you think about small kids, things like capsules and tablets could be difficult. Uh, children might choke on them. Uh, and so when you're talking about kids, you really want to think about transfer factor in terms of chewable formats like TF chewable, a liquid format like Rio Vita, some of those types of things as well. Um, and then you also have to think about ingredients, right? And so not all ingredients, transfer factor has been studied. Uh, we, have a, we have a lot of data, a lot of studies showing the safety of transfer factor, but not all ingredients that we have in our transfer factor products have been studied on kids. And so when we haven't studied them in children, then we wouldn't recommend them for children. And so an example of that would be TF plus. There's a number of ingredients in there that have not been studied in children. And so we wouldn't recommend those for children. Uh, and generally speaking, if you look at the label, you can tell based on how the label is written, whether it's uh, suitable for a child or not. And so things like classic and trifactor would be, uh, but there may be other products that are not suitable for kids. Interesting. You mentioned Transfer Factor Plus. <clears throat> I remember, you know, when I joined For Life, um, they were just a few months old, uh, 1998, and we were all real excited to have this exclusive Transfer Factor product nobody had heard about. We're the first ones to take this to the market. And all of a sudden, they started talking about this Transfer Factor Plus. And it kind of confused us because we were like, well, we thought we had this great Transfer Factor, now we got a plus. Next, is it going to be transfer factor plus plus, then plus plus plus? Yeah. Is this kind of like the Pentium processor? And so, uh, but you know, I learned a lot listening to Dr. McCausland and some of the other doctors that you know we're learning about combining transfer factor with other components that create the synergy. So, tell us just briefly about the difference between trifactor or classic and plus, and even what we're learning. I'm sure we're still learning new things. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great question. It's, it's probably one of the biggest questions that we get uh, is what's different about classic versus um, trifactor versus plus. And we're actually gonna be working on a campaign that's gonna come out shortly that will help explain the differences. And so I can give you a little bit of sneak peek on that. Uh, so basically, if we look at it from an ingredient standpoint, so transfer factor classic is simply the ultra filtered colostrum that makes up transfer factor. So we talked about how transfer factor is this kind of this soup of all these wonderful ingredients, but transfer factor is a very small piece of those ingredients. And so we use this ultra filtration process to actually extract out that transfer factor and concentrate it in a way that 
no, none of the other colostrum supplements out there can do. And so that's what really differentiates for life from many of the other companies out there. And so that's what we call classic. Then we've also found through our research over the years uh, that there is transfer factor in eggs. Uh, and so we call that ovo factor. Uh, it's actually in the egg yolk. And so we've been able to patent and develop a technique, a method to pull transfer factor out of eggs as well. And so when we put the transfer factor out of colostrum, which is what we call ultra factor, we also have another fraction that we call nano, nano factor, which is ultra filtered, but instead of being ultra filtered, it's nano filtered. So it's even smaller transfer factor molecules. And then we combine that with ovo factor. Those three components make up what we call tri factor. And so there's wonderful benefits that tri factor has that classic does it. And so you might, uh, someone might be interested in, in seeing what some of those benefits would be. And then as we move on, we actually have what's called transfer factor plus, which Dave was mentioning earlier. And that takes the tri factor that we have in tri factor and adds other immune ingredients uh, from mushrooms, uh, from aloe, uh, from a number of different uh, baker's yeast, a number of different ingredients that have immune benefits. And the whole idea in that product and in many of the products that you'll see at For Life is that when we have a particular health uh, target that we wanna look at in terms of a product, we like to look at uh, different ingredients that will attack that target using different methodologies, uh, different mechanisms of action. And the reason why you do that is because when you put them together, you get these additive or synergistic effects like Dave was talking about that give these wonderful benefits overall uh, as a whole product. Uh, and so Transfer Factor Plus is really designed that way where you add all these benefits of things like mushrooms and, and so on, as well as the benefits of Trifactor, all coming together to impact your immune system in a positive way uh, and in a synergistic way. Uh, and so, as I was mentioning, we are gonna be having, uh, probably in the next uh, week or two, we're gonna really dive into the research of how we can distinguish these from one another. Uh, we have the research that's been done many, many years ago, but we've done in the last few years, and maybe we'll talk about this in a little bit, we've done a number of research studies showing these wonderful benefits uh, using new technologies that allow us to really look at these products in a, in a really unique and cutting edge way. Wow, that's very interesting. Um, you know, so you talk about <clears throat> uh, targeting, if you will, and I know that our Four Life's cardio, Transfer Factor Cardio, was the first targeted product mm -hmm. that they introduced. And again, you know, as I was going through the years in the beginning, learning from, you know, from uh, Classic to Plus and so on, when they introduced the cardio, it was mentioned that uh, when the, there was the discovery of Ovo Factor, well, having the ability to control the environment of a chicken or a hen, it's easier than a cow, and that's enabled for life to actually do more research when it comes to the targeted products. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, and the, the interesting thing uh, that we've learned over the years, and it's not just us, it's other researchers, is that when you look at the the benefit of having a strong immune system, all of these other body systems like the cardiovascular system, uh, your cognitive system, all these different systems there is an immune component within each of these systems. And so when you have a strong and educated and optimal immune system, all of these other body systems that we talk about in these targeted products also benefit from having that strong immune system. And that's really the, the, the whole basis for the targeted line is to create, is to take that immune component of whatever that health target is or that body system is and allow that immune component to, to be optimal so that it can take care of the immune part and then we have other ingredients within these targeted products that will take care of the body system part. But again, it all starts with having a really strong and sound immune system. And I think we know from the things that are going on uh, right now that having a strong immune system is really central and key to having good health. Especially right now with what's happening. You know, people yeah. on an on a average day, not many people talk about their immune systems. 
But I'd say, okay. I think it's safe to say that right now, a lot of people are researching and studying and talking about their immune system and how they can protect themselves against threats. So yeah. we're very blessed to have you know, transfer factor. Um, you know, we're talking targeted products here. There's one word that I've heard throughout the years and I've heard you know, different definitions and that's polyvalent. You know, mm -hmm. we talk about transfer factor. I've heard it said that it's polyvalent. And so, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but would a comparison kind of be like broad spectrum? Yeah, I think so. I mean, polyvalent, um, just the, the word itself means many benefits. Uh, and so when you think again about the immune system being the core system in our body and how it affects everything we do, you know, things like digestion, uh, our lungs, uh, brain, et cetera, if you have a good immune system, then you're going to achieve that overall well-being that we all want. And that's kind of the, the a summary of what polyvalent really means. Interesting. You know, um, as I started studying transfer factor, I learned about Dr. Sherwood Lawrence's you know, first discovery in 1949 um, and how he was doing research and being an immunologist at the University of New York, a professor. Um, and by the way, if any of you were curious, you can always put him in, in Google, H. Sherwood Lawrence. His name's Henry Sherwood Lawrence. And there's a Wikipedia all about him. The first sentence, it says, best known for his discovery of transfer factors in 1949. So as I learned about transfer factors, I just became so fascinated by this. And I thought to myself, why is it the world doesn't know about this? Now, I have my own philosophy, you know, and it goes like this. After World War II, antibiotics were the big thing. And everybody talked about this wonder drug antibiotics. And so transfer factors got put on the back shelf, basically. And then it resurfaced later. And now, you know, here we are. We hold all these patents on this technology. Doctors have learned that antibiotics, there's been an abuse of them, first of all. I mean, and I always say they're great for preventing death, but they're not made to maintain good health. But anyhow, that's another story. But Dr. Vollmer, why is it that you feel that transfer factor isn't something that was talked about so much over the years and all of a sudden it's becoming a, a big deal yeah that's a great question um trans the research of transfer factor has always gone on even in the age of antibiotics there's always been uh these researchers who's had interest uh in in this area um it was it it did die off as you mentioned with antibiotics uh and probably one of the the other uh, areas where the, that hurt the transfer factor research was in the 80s when AIDS uh, and other bloodborne diseases like Hep C and those types of things they really um, shifted the focus of transfer factor research because at that up to that point every, all of the transfer factor had been done in blood uh, and so when they started seeing all these diseases coming up in blood uh, then a lot of that research really took a back seat. And what it actually did is open up opportunity to look for transfer factor in other matrices or other biological fluids. And it turns out that, and this is the discovery that uh, David, he didn't make the discovery, but he found the literature. Uh, this was the literature, the research that was done, the patents that were done finding transfer factor in colostrum. Uh, and so when David uh, Lisenby found that research, found those patents, that's when he realized this is, this is the company that he wanted to start. He wanted to found this company on that technology to be able to pull transfer factor, pull these wonderful immune benefiting ingredients out of colostrum. Interesting. You know, when I tell my story or the story of transfer factor, and by the way, that's what the business is about for us, those of us out in the field as distributors, we need to be good messengers good storytellers. And I practiced. I practiced with my grandma. I practiced with my dad. I practiced with Gabby. I even practiced in the mirror sometimes telling the story about transfer factor. And I'd start with Dr. Lawrence briefly, but then I would talk about the mother. When she gives birth to her newborn baby, she has an opportunity to pass her acquired immunity, a lifetime of information that she's acquired you know, from all the threats she's had to defend herself against. Well, the baby is born with no acquired immunity. You know, the baby has an innate immune system, but not an acquired immune system. So the mother now has an opportunity to pass that acquired immunity to her newborn baby. To me, it just kind of makes sense. But that's the way it is, right, Dr. Vollmer? It is. In fact, we, we know, uh, so, so 
the transfer factor that we get at for life is from uh, cows, right? Bovine colostrum. And what we know about colo bovine colostrum is that if the calf, the, the newborn uh, calf, doesn't get colostrum, it won't survive. Um, because it, because it's, its immune system is naive, right? It's not been exposed to any of these health threats the mother has. And so it needs that colostrum to be able to acquire that immunity, that passive immunity benefit. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's incredibly critical uh, to newborns, to calves, uh, to many different species. What, but what I want to stress here, though, is that when For Life acqu uh, acquires the, the colostrum to make transfer factor, we don't take all of the colostrum. The calf actually gets about 75% of the colostrum, and we take uh, the remaining about 25%. And so we're not hurting the, the, the calves or anything by taking all that colostrum. They get plenty of colostrum. They do very, very well. But it, also, but it really does point to the fact that colostrum and transfer factor in particular are so important to our immune system because if that calf doesn't get the colostrum that contains the transfer factor, those calves won't, su won't, won't survive. And oftentimes it's within a day or two. Well, I'm glad that you said that because you basically just changed my story. I had it reversed. I was always telling people that the calf gets 25%, that's all it can consume, and we take the other 75. I guess it's the other way around. Yeah, I know. It, and it actually varies. I, 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 we were at the dairies, so. Uh, about a month or two ago. And so I was asking them those types of questions and each dairy is a little bit different. Uh, so some dairies might um, take 50%, uh, some might take 25% uh, to make up our colostrum. It really just kind of depends on the colostrum production as well as what the calf needs are. And we only harvest that in the first 24 hours, don't we? Sorry? The first 24 hours, that's when the colostrum has the abundance, or greatest abundance yeah. of transfer factors. Yeah, so, so what happens is, uh, with, as soon as the calf's born, that first or second milk is, is full of transfer factor and full of these rich immune benefiting ingredients. But then as it starts to transition over the course of days, that colostrum now turns uh, closer to milk. Uh, and so the, the, the transfer factors, all these other wonderful benefits, immunoglobulins, all of those levels go down. They're still there, but they're in very, very small, minute uh, fractions of what colostrum has. And so really getting it within that first, uh, probably 12 hours, that first couple milkings, where the concentration of transfer factors at its highest uh, and its most bioactive uh, portion uh, of the colostrum, that's when we, uh, when we collect the colostrum. But, uh, have, but of course the cat, the, the calves all get enough colostrum to, to allow them to thrive. Do you have the ability to determine um, the, the, I guess, the potency of the transfer factor that you, uh, uh, you have in the, the colostrum? Yeah, we do. Uh, that's something that, that was probably one of the first things that I started working on uh, when I got to 4Life, uh, because at that point we had very crude methods on determining following what we, what we call these biomarkers uh, of transfer factor. Uh, and so we've developed a number of different methods that allow us to monitor the consistency of transfer factor from every lot that we make, from every dairy that we get it from. Uh, not just in terms of being able to make sure we have adequate amounts uh, of transfer factor, but also to look at the activity and make sure that the activity from lot to lot is consistent so that we know if you get a, a bottle of transfer factor uh, classic or trifactor or whatever, that if you, you get that today, you get it two years ago, you get it two years from now, it's gonna be the same transfer factor uh, in each circumstance. And so and, the quality, and what's the shelf the life? Sorry? The shelf life. Yeah, and we do shelf life testing as well. Uh, and so we, we have a number of, of testing methods, a number of, of assays that we use to ensure that the quality is the highest and that the, there's consistency from every lot that we receive. And so we look at these at an ingredient level. And so we look at every, tra every lot of transfer factor that comes in, even before we add it into any products. And so it's really getting tested many, many different times along the way from the dairy, from our uh, ultra filtration process, uh, as a raw material and then on as a finished good product. And so there's 
hundreds and hundreds of different tests that are going on in all of the ingredients, not just transfer vector, in all of the ingredients as we develop these products and as we manufacture these products. Yeah, that's the one thing I love about For Life is they, they take this science seriously. I've never seen a company, especially in our industry of network marketing, that invests so much in science and validation and substantiation. In fact, you were involved, I believe, uh, when you'd come on board in that uh, uh, the study that did on ProTF at um, uh, um, Auburn. Uh, Auburn, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th th that's a great, great point, Dave. Um, that, and that fact, that was one of the things that um, attracted me to For Life was the level of research, the amount of science that goes into the products. Um, of course, I came there as a as a quality person, uh, and so the amount of quality or the the emphasis on quality uh, that For Life has on their products was really impressive to me. And and I had been kind of watching uh, that uh, you know the dietary supplement industry as I was in pharmaceuticals. And uh, as you as you probably know, there's a lot of players out there that uh, don't really do it that way. Uh, they cut corners. Uh, quality is not that important. Uh, and that's really something that I think sets For Life apart from a lot of different companies uh, in terms of the quality and the research that goes into the products. In fact, a story that I always like to tell uh, when people come around and I give a tour of the labs is that when I first got to For Life, we were in the process of building the quality lab. And so we bought all this equipment, well over a million dollars worth of, of different testing types of equipment, looking at minerals and vitamins and identification botanicals all these different types of tests and as we started to develop these uh, procedures these methods um, train these uh, scientists to work in these labs I was going out um, not being familiar with this industry going out and talking to other people within the industry you know my peers uh, out there at different companies and I pretty realized pretty quickly that the emphasis on quality uh, and science and research really wasn't there uh, at some of these other companies. And what I found um, really interesting is that over time, as I was at For Life, the, the folks that sell us all this equipment, these million dollar pieces of equipment, they would start bringing their clients to our lab. And, and I would ask them, I was like, why are you, you know, why are you bringing, you know, essentially our competitors into our lab? And, um, and it turns out that they wanted to show them how it should be done within this industry, um, how the methods that we develop should be validated, how the equipment that we have should be qualified, how the people that run it should be trained, which all goes back to my days in pharmaceuticals, which is that that was how it was done you know, when I was in pharmaceuticals. And so that process, those processes are slowly trickling into the dietary supplement industry. But that's really something in my mind that really sets For Life apart from uh, other companies is the level and the emphasis on quality and the emphasis on research, the emphasis on substantiation um, is, is unlike uh, most companies out there. Well, I can say that the transfer factor certainly changed my life. Um, you know, the, the, the quality of this product. Uh, I grew up, by the way, um, in the 60s. Um, uh, I'm 60 as of today, actually. Um, and in, <laughs> yeah, thanks. And so growing up, uh, I grew up at a time where a lot of mothers didn't breastfeed their babies. I was one of those kids that I didn't receive that first maternal milk my mom bottle fed me and i really believe that you know my struggles that i went through growing up I, every time i got sick i was given an antibiotic um i think that that also is detrimental to my health long term and so i just noticed that when i started taking transfer factor uh, my health changed i i i just found that my overall well-being uh took a turn and i just started feeling much better and i found myself honestly getting sick a whole lot less and i've been to 106 countries and my immune system is like a sherman tank you know i just have a very strong mm -hmm. immune system now and i attribute that mm -hmm. to transfer factor so yeah. I, I feel i feel great you know what's interesting is that um as i was learning about transfer factor uh when i got to for life i started reading a lot of the research on colostrum uh, breastfeeding uh, and it's interesting because one of the papers that I came across looked at babies uh, who had been breastfed 
versus babies who had been infant fed. And it turns out that if you look at a big population of these babies, that there's a subtle difference in terms of uh, the incidence of upper respiratory tract infections. And so babies who have been breastfed have a lower incidence of having upper respiratory tract infections than babies who have been infant fed. Now that doesn't mean that any individual baby is gonna have upper respiratory tract infections, but when you look at a large population and you look at the subtle differences that you might find uh, between uh, babies that are breastfed and babies that are infant fed, there are these small little things that they are finding out that have, could have potentially significant uh, consequences. And then it turns out that if you look at, if you start looking at some of the infant formulas now, you will see that they are really becoming much closer to breast milk than they ever have been. And so they're adding things like these oligosaccharides that have been present in breast milk that no one really knew about until they had technology to allow, allow us to, to discover them. And so as they discover them, they start to add these into the infant formula to make it more like breast milk. And so that's really, the breast milk is really the gold standard of infant formula. And so they're getting closer and closer and closer. Um, but the research behind uh, those differences are really fascinating. And that was something that I thought was incredibly insightful uh, for me, uh, speaking to the benefits of the immune system as it pertains to having colostrum as well as transfer factor. You know, they don't have transfer factor though in those products. That's the difference. And, and that's our right. son... Brandon, our boy Brandon, he's, he's 20 years old now, but he was one of those babies that he didn't want to have anything to do with the breast milk. And so after he was born, because he wouldn't breastfeed, uh, I made the decision. I told Gabby, I said, you know what? I'm taking Transfer Factor Classic. I opened a capsule up and I just put the powder on his lips and he would lick it. And throughout his childhood, we were giving him Transfer Factor, even when he was a newborn baby. And uh, the funny thing is he's 20 years old today. All these wonderful products we have between the chewable, orange flavor, Rio Vita, great drink. Guess what product he takes? He takes either the classic or the trifactor, puts the capsules. He'll put sometimes three or four capsules in his mouth and he chews them because, you know, he just got used to that taste of the transfer factor, classic mm -hmm. and trifactor. Don't do that with plus, you guys, you know, but right, uh, right. that's that's the way he grew up on transfer factors. So, you know, we're very blessed that uh, he didn't have to go through what I went through as a child. Um, mm -hmm. you know, through some of the health challenges. But yeah. uh, it's quite interesting. Now, these studies you talk about, this is a question mm -hmm. that was asked to Do Paul, uh, Dr. Paula Brock. If we want to get access to some of these studies, I know that PubMed, for example, um, is a place with a lot of studies, probably thousands, but you have to yes. subscribe to that and probably even be a doctor. Is there a way to access some of these where if people want information on this, even the abstracts? Yeah, well, PubMed, uh, you don't require a subscription. Uh, it's a free service. It's a free search engine, uh, basically. Uh, and what it will do is if you look up transfer factor, you look up colostrum, what you're going to get is thousands and thousands of research articles that have been done. Um, we have collected many uh, of those articles and utilized them to help develop the research that we have done. But we've actually also done a lot of our own research. Uh, and I don't know that we have a central repository for all of that research, uh, but if you wanna ever reach out to me or reach out to product support and ask for that, we have a list of all the research that we've done. Um, it's, it's actually, it was interesting because I was looking at it the other day and I think we've published, oh, I don't know, it must've been five or six articles just in the last two or three years, um, which is kind of unheard of in our industry. Most people don't publish in our industry. Right. In fact, the last product we developed, Collagen, uh, we actually uh, published uh, an article on how we developed collagen, what ingredients went in there, what was our thinking with collagen. Uh, and it was interesting because we were working with a consultant at the time, and as we were walking him through the process of how we develop these products, how we find these ingredients that have different synergistic, potential synergistic or additive effects because they have different mechanisms, um, he was just blown away. He's like, you guys should really publish this stuff. And so, so we, we, we decided to do that. Uh, it's a little bit unusual. Most companies don't publish their trade secrets. Uh, but uh, this was compelling enough uh, that when you, when we published this in the publishing process of this is really kind of a interesting, um, 
industry, it's almost like I, I liken it to like a, a beauty pageant, right? And so you do all this research, you write all these this paper, and then you submit it to these judges, right? These reviewers, so that they can look at it and decide whether they think it's worthwhile or not. And so when we submitted this manuscript for the development uh, of, of the ingredients that went into collagen, uh, it got published right away. It was accepted uh, with very little revisions. And so we actually published it prior to even launching it. Now we of course didn't let anybody know that we'd published the research article because uh, nobody knew that we were gonna be launching TF Collagen. Uh, but once we, caught, once, we, once we launched that product and we followed it up very quickly with uh, a, um, a press release uh, talking about the publication of that. And then beyond that, we actually have a publication that's probably gonna come out uh, in the next, I would say probably six months, depending on how the review goes, uh, on a clinical trial that we did on collagen where we showed all these wonderful benefits of folks who are taking uh, the transfractor collagen, benefits like uh, skin moisture, fine lines and wrinkles improvements, improvements in elasticity, improvements in firmness, all these wonderful benefits that uh, people realized as they were taking the product and that's going to be published, I would say, probably by the end of the year, I would guess. Wow. Yeah, I definitely would love to get my hands on some of that information. That's great. I, mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. You know, you, you mentioned earlier um, about transfer factor in blood. You know, Dr. Lawrence, uh, Sherwood Lawrence, that was the first mm -hmm. discovery. Now, I live in San Diego here in California. I'm close to the border. And I remember years ago, uh, as I was talking to people about transfer factor, uh, some doctors came to one of my meetings. And they talked about transfer factor in blood. And one of the doctors actually did injections, transfer factor injections. And so, you know, he brought up this theory, I guess, that it goes straight into the bloodstream. But I've talked to other doctors that said that they prefer the oral method for many reasons. One, um, it's much more, I guess, responsible. You're not dealing with blood. Number two, it's actually much, much less expensive. And three, they're finding they get the same results. And in some cases, they've even found better results taking it orally than injecting it. But one of the arguments was transfer factor passing through the digestive system and possibly the degradation of, of the peptide. So if you can share with us briefly a little bit about how it's absorbed through the digestive tract into the bloodstream. Yeah, and, and, and I have to preface this by saying that, you know, we don't know a lot uh, about exactly how that happens. Uh, and so there's a lot of theories out there. Uh, we currently subscribe to the theory that it is absorbed through these things called Peyer's patches. And so it allows the transfer factor, these peptides and proteins, that once we ingest them and they go in into our body, they, uh, they, they traverse the, uh, the stomach uh, and oftentimes these peptides and proteins can be degraded a little bit, like you mentioned, but these, these, these peptides, these transfractor proteins, they actually get absorbed into the bloodstream through what we believe are these Peyer's patches. And then that allows the transfractor to get wherever it needs to uh, once, it's, once it's gotten into the bloodstream. Uh, but all of that is kind of a theory at this point. Um, until we specifically identify transfer factor down to the molecular level, um, then we won't be able to, to figure that out. Uh, but we do have a lot of research that's going on uh, that will help us be able to determine that. Um, and of course, the other, the other thing to think about too, uh, when we think about our immune system, most of our immune system is actually in our gut. Uh, in fact, 70% of our immune cells are in our gut. And so transfer factor is able to interact, to communicate with these immune cells in the gut. And so oftentimes you may not even need to get into the bloodstream because most of our immune cells are actually already here in the gut. Important point. Yeah, I never thought of it that way, but very true. You hear, in fact, I don't know how long ago it was, but I started hearing a lot about the immune system begins in the gut. Yeah. There's a lot of talk about that. Um, Gabby. And it makes uh, sense too, right, Dave? Because if you think about the health threats that you might encounter, how are those health threats going to come into your body? they're oftentimes going to come in through your mouth, right. things that you eat, right? And so it makes sense that the, most of your immune cells, most of your immune system is centered in the gut because that's where a lot of your health threats are going to come from. Interesting. Uh, I just unmuted Gabby. She has a question on the collagen study in telomeres. Gabby? 
Uh, is it a question, sweetie, you have, or did, was it just you wanted me to remind me to ask Dr. Volmer later? Now, um, actually, um, at convention, they mentioned something about collagen and telomeres. And telomeres mm -hmm. are very important to keep us youthful, uh, vibrant, right. vitality. Yep. It's, you know, it's, it's a, you know, telomeres are important. Um, they're good for, to see if our stem cells are good too for any kind of repair we, repairs we may need. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, well, <laughs> have you guys finished the study? Um, so that was my question. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually going to go in in the paper in the publication that I was talking about. This is going to come out later this year, uh, and that's a it's a, it's a good uh, comment on that. Um, what we found in in this telomer study, and, and so just if, if we want to back up for a second, we think about telomeres. Telomeres are really uh, kind of the end caps of our DNA, and so we have our chromosomes, which are in our cells, and then within our chromosomes are these uh, long, long pieces of DNA. And at the end of those are our telomeres. And our telomeres are at the end because they wanna protect the DNA so it doesn't degrade over time as these cells proliferate, as they split and grow into new cells. And so it turns out that we were doing a study because we thought there were some anti-aging benefits, right? Because telomeres are kind of anti-aging uh, markers. And so we wanted to look at our transfer factor collagen product in the context of what happens when we treat uh, these telomeres with the transfer factor collagen product. And it turns out that these telomeres actually are protected by this enzyme called telomerase. And so telomeres, again, are at the end of the, of the DNA. So they're kind of the shoestring, the cap on the shoestring. The telomerase is an enzyme that's allowed to protect, that is there to protect those end caps, those telomeres. And it turns out that when you look at telomerase, uh, this enzyme that helps protect telomeres, that when you give it transfer factor collagen, it actually activates that up to 277% higher than if you don't treat that with transfer factor collagen. And so what it really is telling us is it's got some anti-aging benefits along with these other wonderful benefits that you see in the skin that we've actually seen in these clinical studies. And so all of that research is actually gonna be published uh, again in this article that I believe it's actually close to being submitted at this point. Um, and so it really kind of depends on, on how long the reviewers take for this manuscript on, as far as when it will be published. But my guess is it's probably gonna be published uh, for sure by the end of the year. And it will go into all the details of, of the study that we did uh, to support telomerase activity with the transfer vector collagen. And we'll have, we'll have access to that? Oh yeah, so one of the things, uh, you know, when I got into uh, the R&D and we started talking about publishing, one of the things that we decided was that any research that we publish, um, it has to be open, what we call open access. Um, and so your, your mention of being able to, having to have a subscription. So PubMed actually allows you to search uh, research, search these different journals, uh, but the different journals may or may not have access. You may need a subscription in particular journals. So in, for instance, the New England Journal of Medicine, Nature, all these uh, very prestigious journals, you need a subscription to actually look at the articles. When we started developing and publishing our research, we made a conscious decision to only publish an article in, in journals that were considered open access. And so what that means is if you go on to Google and you search for a research article that For Life has done or has published, it will be an open access article that you'll be able to go in and read everything about the research that was done uh, in that publication. Fascinating. Well, that's, you know, I that's always, not cheap. It, it's, it's, it's expensive to, to, to make right. because nobody's making any money if people can look at it for free. Uh, and so it ends up that whoever's uh, writing the article has to foot those costs. And so that's a conscious effort that For Life has made so that it's, uh, it allows access for distributors, customers, or whoever wants to see our research. What about trade secrets? I mean, is any that stuff disclosed in some of these articles? Yeah, no, we, we, we are very careful about how we describe the products that we study in there. And so they're, they're, they're described in 
somewhat generic terms. There's no formulas in there. Okay. So even when you look at the, uh, the, the review article that we did on how we develop collagen, you won't find the formula in there. What you will find is all the ingredients that we looked at, and some of them we decided not to use, but you know, it's important for us to look at everything, and we wanted to report on that. But most, and so most of the ingredients are already in there, in that article, but the amounts, the formula, and all that sort of stuff is still uh, kept secret. So it's still a trade secret. Okay, great. Now, for those of you that have just joined us, by the way, uh, we're with Dr. David Vollmer. He's the Chief Scientific Officer for For Life Research, and we're very fortunate to have pinned him down. He's holed up in his home, too, right now, as we're all doing our social distancing. Uh, he's taking the time to join us today to also ask questions, which we will open it up right now in the Q&A section. We have a few questions, but I have one more question. Okay. Now, as, I've, as I've gone through my four life career, I always get excited about what's on the horizon. And you shocked me yesterday when we talked on the phone. You told me that they're already looking not at the upcoming convention in a year, but the one in two and a half years. You know, so you guys are always looking ahead in research. So I just want to know, how do you feel about the future of transfer factor and the things that you guys are learning and discovering about this amazing technology? Well, I, I, I would say that the future is very bright for transfer factor. Uh, we are really at the beginning. Uh, it's interesting because as you talked about my predecessors, uh, Dr. Cal and all those, I remember listening to uh, Dr. Cowell talk about transfer factor and he made the comment that we probably only know about 10% of everything about transfer factor. And it's interesting because we've done a lot of research, we've published a lot, uh, we've learned a lot, and I still feel like there's so much more uh, yet to be discovered about transfer factor. And so we're really still at the very beginning. Uh, and what's wonderful about being at the beginning is we have these tools that we didn't have uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we didn't have the time of all the transfer factor research uh, during the Sherwood Lawrence era. But we have all these wonderful tools uh, that we'll actually be talking about uh, in the next in the next few weeks, talking about how um, how transfer factor has benefits not just towards natural killer cells, but also other cells, other immune cells. Wow. Um, and so that's going to be coming out uh, pretty soon, and we're going to be talking a lot about that. Uh, through our marketing channel. Um, one of the interesting things that has happened just lately, uh, and you guys are actually going to be the first to know about it, is we've started a partnership with an immunology researcher. This happened uh, about midway, uh, latter part of last year, uh, of an immunology research at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. And if you've heard about that um, department, that's part of the National Institutes of Health, uh, they are very prominent in a lot of the, the press conferences are going on uh, over the last few weeks. And this person who we're working with, who we're partnering with, he was a, a postdoctoral student of a professor named Charles Kirkpatrick. And Charles Kirkpatrick was really uh, kind of the forebearers of transfer factor. He was one of the last pioneers in transfer factor research before it started to kind of die off. Uh, and what's interesting about uh, this researcher that we're working with is he believes he's identified transfer factor in blood. And so we're actually working with him to hopefully be able to identify it down to the molecular level in colostrum. So you can imagine it's very, you know, in this, in this very complex mixture of, of colostrum, what are these small little molecules that are, that are not very present? And that's why we need to extract them out is because they're in very, very low quantities. They're not very present, but if you can identify it, if you can figure out what that is, then that allows you to go look specifically in different things like eggs and colostrum and milk, all these other areas where a transfer factor might be there, but it's just, we don't know what to look for, right? It's kind of an unknown, unknown. Um, and so a lot of his work is able, is, is working towards identifying that. We're working together with him using these, uh, these state-of-the-art uh, technologies, these proteomic type of, of technologies that allows us to identify these peptides and these proteins. And what we know from, from his work as well is that these things that he's studying, he's finding immune benefits uh, and immune memory uh, in all of the, on all of his research. 
And what was very interesting to me, Dave, is the, the first time I talked to him, he's a very serious person. Um, and he actually said, yeah, I've looked at your stuff. I didn't believe it. I didn't think it was going to work. And then I tested it and it worked just like I, just like the, the, the uh, transfer factors that he's getting out of blood. And so that really made me feel good because here you have somebody who I didn't even know he was working on our products and he's very, comes from a very prestigious uh, institution. And yet he's been looking at our products and he's been seeing some of the same results that we're seeing. And so that really gives you a lot of confidence, the confidence you talked about when you have other people looking at your stuff and testing your stuff and finding the same or maybe even better benefits. Incredible. You know, I just want to tell everybody that's listening out there how fortunate, how blessed we are to be involved with this amazing company, with this amazing product. I know this is not a business call right now or a business webinar, but, you know, if there's ever a time to, to get involved and to get the word out there and work, you know, tell people, build your business. It's right now. I saw this, you know, 21 plus years ago, the opportunity, and I didn't want to miss it. And back then, no one was talking about this. Well, look at what's going on around the world. People are talking about their immune system so much. Now, you know, this just applied to me. I've been working with Florida for 22 years, but my business, last month alone, it grew 15 million. I normally do over 20 million. It went over 35 million in the month of March because of what's going on out there. So, and this is the beginning, you know, like, like Dr. Vollmer said, we're, we're really at the beginning of this and we're learning more. So the future is incredibly bright, you guys. And I feel like signing myself up all over again. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's go ahead and open it up for some questions that we have here. Um, we'll start with Lisa Mahone. Uh, Lisa's asking about the collagen. This is a good question, Lisa, because we do have kosher products. Is it possible? Can the collagen also uh, at some point in time be made uh, kosher? Yeah, we're working on that, uh, and I believe we're very, very close. Uh, in fact, I think we probably are kosher. We may not advertise that because within the U.S. market, it's not that important. But if you go over to uh, different markets within the world, I'm thinking of particularly Southeast Asia where collagen is huge, uh, it is presented there as halal and kosher. And so it's probably not uh, been advertised or marketed that way here in the U.S., but I believe it is. Okay, wonderful. I, I can, uh, when I, when I uh, if, if you have a way to to for me to follow up, uh, I, I'm 99 percent sure that that's the case, but I just need to go do a little bit of digging to be 100 percent sure, and so I can always follow up with that. Uh, but I think, as far as I know, uh, mm -hmm. it is considered kosher and halal. We okay. sell in Southeast Asia, it does really, really well in that market. And so those are always the requirements in Southeast Asia. And so I would assume that same uh, categorization is for the U.S. product as well. You know, re regarding the collagen, what's the chance of eventually having an unflavored collagen so that we can actually add our own flavor to it? It's a great question. And as I mentioned to you uh, yesterday, we're, we're working on products uh, all the time. Okay. Uh, and maybe I should leave it at that. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, let's go to, to uh, Colwinder up in Canada. Um, she's asking, it doesn't matter when you take the products, if it's in the morning or evening time, um, you know, I guess biologically, is there any difference? No, uh, probably not. If, if there are differences, the differences are probably pretty subtle. And so my recommendation uh, for these types of questions is take it when you remember it. What, what time of day for you to remember it the best is when you should take it. Because what happens a lot of times is that you, you might try to find the perfect time to take it, right? But then one day that's the perfect time, but the next day it's not. And so to me, the, the key here is consistency, right? Making sure you take it every day uh, and take it at a time that's convenient for you. Um, and, and that's really the, the, the key, right? Is, is consistently taking it, not when is the optimal time to take it because that may not be optimal every day. And so to me, the, the key is, is just finding the time uh, where you can devote to you know, always taking it. And so for me, that's always in the morning. I take all of my, uh, except for the Pro-TF, I take all of my 
supplements in the morning with my breakfast because that's convenient for me. It's easy for me to remember. It's sitting out on the cabinet. Uh, and so I know I'm getting it every day. And with food, without food, it doesn't make a difference, right? Uh, it, it depends. Yeah. I mean, there are subtle, again, there's subtle differences depending on uh, what type of ingredient. If it's a fat soluble uh, vitamin, uh, you know, like vitamin uh, E, then you would, you would want to take that with food. Um, but other water soluble vitamins, it may not make any difference. But again, over time, having a consistent time when to take a product is more important than uh, should I take it fed or fasted. Okay. And transfer factor is a water soluble, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Okay, great. We have a question from Anna Mendez from Boston, Massachusetts, uh, asking if uh, transfer factor classic or trifactor has any soy ingredients at all. They do not. Nope, there are no soy ingredients in classic or in um, trifactor. Okay. Remember, it's classic is just a bovine ultrafiltrate or bo a transfer factor out of bovine colostrum that's been ultrafiltered. Trifactor is ultrafiltered colostrum, nanofiltered colostrum, and then ovofactor, which is the transfer factor out of eggs. And so none of those have soy. Okay, great. And talking about you know chickens and, and bovine, um, the question we have here from Greensboro uh, is, um, how transfer factors from bovine or chicken eggs are adaptable in human immune systems? Simple answer, she said. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that could be a really complicated answer. And, and that, that, that research was actually done uh, during the Sherwood Lawrence era. And so what they did is they looked at transfer factors across species. And it turns out that transfer factors across species uh, are able to have the same benefits. And so they looked at uh, different animals. In this case, you're talking about going from bovine or from chicken to humans. It turns out that all that research demonstrates that transfer factor as these small bioperative peptides offer the same benefits that they would say a calf that they would also offer uh, to a human. And so the answer is yes, they are cross species uh, compatible. And David Lisenby, that's one of the things that he had discovered in his research, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, that was being non-specific, non-species specific. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't make sense if it was species specific. Then we probably we probably wouldn't be here today. Right, or we. I better not say it in a sense. They run around finding women that are, that are you know had just had newborn babies, saying, "Hey, you know." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, okay. So next question from Gilmar uh, down in Brazil. Um, I, I'd like to take a shot at this one, if you don't mind, Doctor Volmer. Uh, yeah. This one's basically about vaccines. And the way I've always said, look, a vaccine to me really is, first of all, it's specific towards a, a, you know, a disease, all right? Whether viral, bacterial, whatever. It's like a picture, a snapshot, so that your immune system now can identify whether it's tuberculosis or whatever it is. And it comes, the root word vaccine is from vaca, cow, correct? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so... Uh, but it's like a snapshot, a picture, you know, so that your immune system can recognize, respond to that particular disease, if, if, you know, if you will. And so that's what a vaccine is. Whereas transfer factor, as I mentioned earlier, like being polyvalent, but transfer factor is basically like having a whole bunch of snapshots, if you will, so that your immune system can recognize, respond, and remember threats. Would that be a fair statement? Uh, absolutely. Yep. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> okay, thanks. Gilmar, I hope that answered your question, but thank you uh, for the question there. Uh, here's one from an anonymous attendee. Uh, hi, Dr. Volmer. Uh, are there any stem cells activating ingredients, precursors and for life products? You know, that's a great question. That's an area of research that we haven't really dove into. Uh, there's a, a lot of products out there that talk about that. Um, but that's really something that we, we haven't uh, spent a lot of time on. My guess is probably you, we would probably see transfer factor have some activity as it pertains to these stem cells. Um, and I only say that because every time we look at transfer factor, no matter what research, what system we're looking at, whether it's a prebiotic, whether they're looking at natural killer cells or T cells or B cells, it always have, it always has these incredible benefits you may not expect. 
and so without having done much research on stem cells, I would venture to say that we would probably see some good activity there as well. Okay, great. Um, have one here, um, I think it's from Coolwinder, just asking about combining the various products, you know, whether it's cardio with TF, with glucose. I mean, can you overdo it? Can you have too much or combine too much of the transfer factor products? Uh, there, there are probably some products um, that um, you know you wouldn't want to take together, um, but by and large, uh, and I think generally we, we put instructions uh, within the label. Uh, but by and large, most products you can take together. In fact, a lot of times they are designed to be taken together. And so, imagine the situation. So, what 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 I always do is I always start with uh, Right Start. Right, Right Start is my foundational. Uh, supplements to take and then there may be times where I want to take a glucose or a cardio that I supplement on top of right start and so a lot of our products are designed to be taken together uh, and so there shouldn't be any problem uh, if someone wants to mix or match or add uh, products together oftentimes you'll get uh, even better benefits as you add different products depending on uh, what uh, sort of health concern you might have Right. I always tell people, to... go ahead, sweetie. No, I was just wondering, can you take enzymes with uh, transfer factor, digestive enzymes, because it is a, a protein, so. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I mean, that's a great question. Uh, so I guess you'd have some concern of whether the, the digestive enzymes might uh, chew up the transfer factor. Turns out that uh, we actually have uh, a system that has transfer factor in digestive enzymes. It's called the Digest for Life Reset System. Uh, and it actually has transfer factor in there, not, not necessarily because of the, of the protein. It's actually transfer factor uh, as a prebiotic. Uh, and so we have these digestive enzymes that help uh, break up all of the, the sugars, the fats, the carbs. Um, but we also have transfer factor that acts as a prebiotic. And so from a digestive standpoint, there's no problem at all. In fact, you might see some wonderful benefits taking those together. Interesting, okay. Um, you, you mentioned earlier that Right Start is your base. Um, one thing I tell people mm -hmm. all the time, I say, look, at least take your transfer factor plus or, tra or tri factor, but begin with your transfer factor and then add to that. You know, like if you wanna put glucose or cardio or recall, mm -hmm. But I always yeah. tell people, look, take transfer factor plus, you know, unless you feel you want to take trifactor, but begin with that and then add to that. But you know, I like for sure, right, right starts my favorite product, you know, because you got everything. You look at that box, I'm blown away when I look at everything that is in that product. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's, I think if you talk with most of us in the research and development department, you'll get the same answer. They always start with right start as well, just because there's, there's so many wonderful ingredients within that product. It's pretty convenient uh, to take. And so that's the first thing I take in the morning with breakfast. And then I supplement that with other products, depending on what my particular health concern is at that time. Uh, I also like to take uh, pro TF uh, over the course as well, because it has a wonderful, a lot, a lot of protein benefits as well. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's right. Start is, is, is my base product. And then I build off of that. Yeah. And I think economically too, um, it's makes sense. Uh, it's a great product because many people go to, you know, the health store, GNC, vitamin shop, whatever, and they buy enzymes They buy either antioxidants, maybe grapeseed extract. They buy their essential fatty acids. They buy their vitamins, their minerals. You end up having, you know, 20 different bottles in your cupboard. Here, you got a box with some sachets. You can throw a sachet in your purse or your pocket, and you've got what you need for the day. Yep, absolutely. So convenient and cost effective. Mm -hmm. So um, let's go ahead and we'll take one more question here. Actually, it's a simple question. It has more to do with marketing, really. Marcel from Australia is asking, uh, do you, will you be expanding the product range uh, down under in the near future? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, we, uh, we haven't um, penetrated that market as well as we should, as well as- I was as just gonna I say, would, get the sales up and I'm sure they will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and that's always the key, right? Is when, once you have those sales, then the, the products will follow. Um, the, the Australian market's a little bit different than other markets. And so uh, they do have a little bit 
uh, of a more stringent requirement in terms of registering uh, products within Australia. Uh, it's called the TGA, if you're interested. Uh, but we don't, we don't have any regulatory issues uh, with our products as it pertains to the TGA. Excuse me. Uh, most of the issue is just uh, building that market, finding the right leader down there to build that market. And then once you have a good leader down there, uh, then the products will come. That's it. You know, we began this with Transfer Factor Classic, you guys. We didn't have everything we have today. And I tell people, you guys are very fortunate because you have so much more resources today, so many more tools available, you know, a whole scientific team now. We began with this with just a couple of products, and that's what we had to build upon. So you guys can achieve much more today than we could in the early days. So... Um, We've got, list. Uh, actually, Dr. Vollmer, this one has to deal with what we talked about yesterday. So why don't we take this one as the okay. last question, and then uh, we'll close the call. And again, you know, we thank everybody for joining us, and especially Dr. Vollmer taking the time to be with us today. This video, our webinar, will be uploaded to my website, davedaughtry.com. Uh, you'll be able to download it either later this evening or in the morning. It has to process um, by Zoom, and then we'll make it available uh, in the education library on my website. So this one, uh, it just simply says, uh, and I, I'm sure this is on everybody's mind. Um, it says, oh, wait, I lost it. I apologize here. Uh, it has to do with um, the old coronavirus, I guess. It just says, what do you advise us on ways to explain to people about the benefits of transfer factors to protect themselves from this pandemic that is traveling around the world? That's a great question. Uh, it's a question that we get a lot, uh, not just with the coronavirus, but uh, we get that we get disease questions all the time. And um, and so I, it's always a good for me to answer these questions. I like to get these questions because it, I, it gives me an opportunity to explain uh, why we can't talk about this, uh, because a lot of times people get really upset that we can't talk about disease. Uh, and so this offers me an opportunity to, to, to kind of explain why, why we can't do that. So from a regulatory standpoint, uh, not just in the U.S., but across the world, dietary supplements are used to, to help supplement, right? That's why they're called supplements. They're used to help supplement the diet. And they're used to help supplement the diet in the context of a healthy subject. And when you start talking about diseases, you are now not talking about a healthy subject. What you're talking about is you're talking about drugs, right? And so to treat diseases, you need drugs. And drugs go through a very different regulatory path than dietary ingredients do. Dietary ingredients are inherently much more safe than drugs, and so they don't have to go through all the safety and toxicity, all the efficacy studies um, that, that drugs do because they are inherently much more safe. But they are only designed uh, in the context of a healthy subject. And so when we talk about dietary supplements and diseases, we can't treat, we can't cure, we can't prevent, we can't say any of those things as it pertains. And the reason why is because we haven't studied it that way, right? We haven't studied it in the context of the disease. We haven't studied what happens with transfer factor to someone who has coronavirus, because that's a drug. Now we would be making drug claims. And if you want to make drug claims, you have to go through all these steps. You have to go through this regulatory path that pharmaceuticals have to go through that dietary ingredients don't have to. Now we could do that. We could try that. And, and some companies have tried that. The problem is, is that when you have ingredients that are natural, it's really, really hard to patent natural ingredients. Now we've been able to patent them through method patents and use patents. But inherently, it's very, very difficult to patent natural ingredients. And so if you can't patent it, and then you do this wonderful study to show that transfer factor works on this disease, and you've done all the clinical studies to demonstrate that, you've spent, now it's over a billion dollars to, to, to develop a drug that gets approved by the FDA, you would never be able to recoup all that because the minute you develop that drug, everybody's going to come in and create something very, very similar because you can't pr protect that with a patent. And so very, two very different regulatory frameworks for um, disease and then for uh, what I consider as kind of a proactive approach to your health. Uh, and so because we don't study these products, these ingredients in the context of the disease, 
we can't make any disease claims. And so that's why you see for life being very, very cautious, very, very conservative about this because it's frankly, it's just against the law. And I know that there's, you know, I read this every day, Dave, I get the warning letter from FDA and I see every day that somebody's talking about, you know, their product treats COVID-19 and, uh, and the FDA comes in and they shut, shut them down. Uh, and we don't ever want that to happen at the For Life. We want this to be a sustainable business, a long-term proposition uh, for everybody so that, so that this, this first time caller on this Zoom call can have 22 years at For Life, just like Dave has had up to this point. Uh, it's really trying to protect the company, to protect the distributors so that we don't go out there and we make uh, unapproved claims, illegal claims that could put the company in jeopardy. Wow. I am going to listen to that answer over and over and I'm going to <laughs> memorize it. Seriously. Yeah, that's how I've become a good messenger, by the way. I listen to these things and I process them and I memorize a lot of them. But that is an amazing answer because I get asked that question a lot, too. You know, they even out, you know, ask about the FDA and, and all this. And so mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. I really appreciate that. Thank mm -hmm. you, Dr. Yeah. You know, sure. Now, if you want to avoid this pandemic that's going around, just do what I did. I built a house on the moon and you can see through my window right now. <laughs> you know, so I'm fine. <laughs> so, so Gabby, Gabby's not with you then, huh? She's back at the house and you're on the moon. I just teleport, you know, I'll, I'll be back downstairs <laughs> in a few minutes. <laughs> he, he gotcha. it. And it's like he's gone anyway. You know, I feel like a single mom sometimes. <laughs> okay. He's working really hard though, so that's why it's okay. <laughs> well, you know, hey, if there's, you guys, let me finish with this and then we'll close the call. If there's ever a time to get the word out, it's now. I am spending a lot of time talking to a lot of people, and that's why my business grew 15 million last month because I'm working, I'm taking advantage of an opportunity trying to maintain balance as well. Yes, today's my birthday. Thank you everybody for all the wonderful birthday wishes. I really appreciate it. I'll be spending the rest of the evening at 7.30 here now with my family. And so, you know, but I love this business because it gives me the ability to choose. I am not a slave to having to get up every day, go to work and thank heavens I'm not because look at those people that are slaves to that. They can't do that right now, they're stuck home. And here I'm very fortunate that my business is growing while other people's businesses are suffering because I have a home-based business. I, I, to me, this is normal, you know? And when everyone said that they're stuck at home, I'm like, well, I always walk 20 feet from my bedroom to my office every day. That's how I work. I've been doing this for 40 years, network marketing, with For Life 20, almost 22 years. So we're very blessed to have Dr. Volmer with us today. Um, he's answered some great questions, given us some great wisdom and insight. And, uh, you know, we're so fortunate to have people like Dr. Vollmer with us, with For Life, and we hope you're always here with us, Doctor. Don't go anywhere else, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so Absolutely. I love For Life. It's a w wonderful company, wonderful uh, distributors, wonderful customers, wonderful management, wonderful founders, wonderful employees. You and know, can and give a shout out to uh, the people, as, as Dave was mentioning, there has been a tremendous amount of sales going on, and so we have people working night and day uh, on weekends to keep up with all the demand on products. And so I just wanted to give a shout out to all the folks in our global supply chain that kind of keep the, keep the light on, keep the machines going, uh, keep the products coming uh, so that everybody can benefit, uh, particularly at this time. Thank you. Thanks, doctor. You know, and, and a shout out as well. Uh, this is not a recognition type of meeting, but I do want to recognize all of you that have achieved new ranks, whether it's diamond, a presidential diamond, international diamond. We had a number of gold international diamonds that broke rank last month. And so you're all working hard. We appreciate it. And, you know, I'll just say this and we'll close out that my observation of 22 years with For Life is that the people that come into For Life stay with For Life. You know, everybody from Steve Two, who I met back in 2000, uh, when David Lisenby acquired the company called ShapeRite. Uh, Steve then became our president and CEO. Um, but all, many, many people at Farlife have been with the company since its inception. Why does that happen? Because they know a great company when they have one and they stay around. And that's frankly why I have distributors, Gabby and I, just like many of you, that have been with me for the past 20 plus years. 
and it's because we know what we have. So we're very grateful. Uh, let's protect it as well by the things we say and how we share this opportunity out there. Um, you know, just be cautious, but get out and share the word. And if you really want to know, I just go and use the Connect app. Anything that For Life produces, you've got videos, you've got presentations, PDFs. Those are all approved by the company. It's great information. Use that. Spread the word. If you're home and you're watching a movie, take out your cell phone, get on your, you can send 10 uh, videos through WhatsApp to 10 contacts in your telephone. Send 100 out a night. Every one of you got hundreds of people on your cell phone. Get the word out. So, Dr. Vollmer, thanks again for being with us. Um, look Great forward to, to what's coming out in the future. You kind of gave us a little hint. So, uh, <laughs> We're, we're grateful for that. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a wonderful night. Stay safe, all right? And uh, let's get out there. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing, all right? And remember, teamwork makes the dream work. We'll talk to you all real soon. Dr. Thank Vollmer, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.